I don't know. Uh, make me okay. the co-host. Okay. There you go. Oops. There you are, your co-host. Good afternoon. Hi. Welcome. Oh. Hello. Hi, Fred. Good to see you. I'm back. Hi. Hi, Greg. Good to see you, too. I like the flower Hello. behind you. Iris. Iris, yes. Hey, Karen. Good to see you, too. Yes, Donna. <laughs> I'm, I'm still uh, at the beach. Yeah, I'm good. You know, that's the place to stay, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I wish. Oh, man. Soon, I'm at the beach, soon. too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i know it's crazy in my head i'm at the beach <laughs> that's right in, in your head <laughs> all right hi donna hi hi good to see you again welcome good to see you too all right looking forward to your class oh thank you yeah, we'll be talking about Leo today. <laughs> yeah, good old Leo. Good old Leo. <laughs> we'll give it a few more seconds to uh, let people come in here before we get started. All right. Oh, hi, Ivy. It's another one coming in here. <laughs> Haven't seen you in a while, Ivy. Oh, you're on, you're not, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, it's, it's been, a, it's been a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I like Leonardo uh, da Vinci. I think he's such an uh, brilliant person oh yes um, he's way ahead of his time that's for sure Donna, i mean yes. may i ask a question to the group sure go for it um yeah i've been having trouble oh probably for the last two weeks when i sign up for a class um i never get a confirmation anymore mm -hmm. um i go on and i do you know the google calendar so i do have it in my calendar you know, mm -hmm. automatically but i'm having problems with that is anyone else having difficulties I get an email confirmation. I, I'm not having any problems. I don't have any problems. Yeah, I get okay, a confirmation as well. I've been on and off with my cable company and um, get set up and nobody can really figure out why. Okay, well, thanks very much. I appreciate your input. Yeah, maybe, J John, maybe you can, um, yeah, hit it. Uh, oh, the tech department's John already checked into it. I've oh, already they? Okay. back and forth with them, and they told me to get, get and set up with a, a Gmail account instead of my cable company. Um, and I really hate to do that because then I'm going to lose, well, I guess I could have two of them, um, yeah. lose all my list of classes because I really like that because sometimes you kind of don't remember what you take <laughs> it's been two or three months ago. <laughs> I wonder if in your calendar, there may be a thing that says send an alert or something like that, which is not checked. Look in your calendar and see if you can't have it set up to send an alert, which will send an alert to your email yeah. prior to when the class starts. 
Oh, I, I have it. I mean, it shows up in my, my phone calendar, so that's no problem. I know, you know, when they are, but it's just that I'm not getting the confirmations. And when I signed up, uh, cause I just only started in January, I was getting, you know, everything. Plus I'm not getting notes. The last three classes, I never got any of the notes. Mm. So there's sure it's not going in spam or some junk or yeah. spam. Yeah. I've, I've already checked all that. Yeah. Okay. No. All right. So, all right. Thank you very much. All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, some of these, you know, it's they may have not work for a while and then they hopefully, they, you know, they start suddenly start working. So maybe that will happen for you. Uh, <laughs> all right, everyone, I want to welcome everyone to get set up. We're seniors teaching seniors about technology. We have social hours and all types of programming for you to enjoy. Uh, today's class, we're going to talk about the life and art of Leonardo da Vinci. Hi, my name is Donna. I am your guide for today. I was in the uh, IT industry for over 30 years. I enjoy helping people get over their fear of technology. And this session is being recorded. If you wish to get a copy of the recording, you can do so by emailing help at getsetup.io. And we have John today in the uh, chat room. So he can, if you have any uh, questions or um, for him, you can go ahead and ask him in there. Um, we are not paid to promote anything you know, today, so we're not going to be selling off any expensive uh, Da Vinci uh, paintings or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Open your wallets. <laughs> Just a small fee. Get out your Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, really cash out that Bitcoin account. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit of what Da Vinci's life was like. We're going to take a look at his most famous works throughout his life and his influence on art history and um I'm sure, has anyone ever seen a Leonardo da Vinci painting in real life? Yes. Yep. I have. Yes. In Milan. Mm -hmm. what, which one did you see? I, I saw The Lord's Supper. Oh, nice. Last Supper, yeah. I saw The Last Supper. Yeah. And I may have seen some of his sketches at uh, Windsor Castle. Mm. They have oh, a yeah. huge collection there. And I've uh, had the pleasure of following his work to eight different countries. And wow. I've seen most of his major works in uh, different, all over the world. I think he's fabulous. And his home, his last home we may cover in France. I spent a week there. Oh, nice. Wow. Nice. I love him. <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> all right. So we're going to first of all start off with his childhood, and you know, and and if anyone wants to chime in, if you have any bits and pieces here and there, feel free to you know, to contribute to the group. Uh, you know, for, he was uh, first of all he was uh, born in 1452 in Vinci, Tuscany. This is a picture of what it looks like today. Nice little town there in next to the hills. He was an illegitimate child. <laughs> uh, he was raised by his grandfather. He ended up being raised by his grandfather. He was the oldest of 12, but you know, they, they treated him just like you know one of the gang, all his steps that he had in his family. Uh, and he only had just a basic informal education. He wasn't anything really special. Uh, when he, at, at uh, age 14, his family moved to Florence and it was in Florence where he, he, his dad had some connections, definitely. Even though they had, you know, they were a average family, he ended up getting an apprenticeship with Andrea del Veraccio, and he was one of the leading Florentine painters and sculptors. He uh, studied under him for seven years. Uh, he would have studied uh, things like sculpture, um, painting, drawing. And it was typical of that of this time uh, in the Renaissance that you would also study um, anatomy, architecture, chemistry, mathematics, engineering. It was all in one back then. It was all the arts and science. Everything was all grouped together. When you went to art school, you would study an anatomy. If you were a female artist, you would not be allowed in the <laughs> art school because they were showing anatomy. So it was uh, an interesting time. And he, he remained there for seven years. Um, <clears throat> Baraccio, he, he was with a very, he was, he was with the court of Medici. 
And they were a very powerful family. They really supported the arts and they were politically involved in the area. And they really attributed a lot to the, um, the arts for the Renaissance. Um, they, they were heavily involved money and, and support. So that's part of why Florence became very influential with the uh, Renaissance art of Italy. So he definitely, his dad definitely, to, to get this, this little job for his uh, son, he definitely had, he pulled some strings somewhere. <laughs> Not too sure where. So when we're looking at the artwork that he did under his apprenticeship, now these would be paintings he, they did together. And the famous one here is the Baptism of Christ. And the other one is the Annunciation. Let's take a look at these up close. A little bit here. This is the baptism of Jesus. Um, from what I've studied, they say that the uh, the angels here kneeling were painted by Leonardo. They say that Ferraccio, when the minute he saw Leonardo, the young Leonardo paint, that he stopped painting for the rest of his life. That's not true. He didn't stop painting. But he was impressed. He was highly impressed of his student and just the way he was able to paint the images. He definitely had a different style about him from the other, uh, the typical painters of that day. I think this little, little culottes that he has on or whatever these are, <laughs> very colorful, but the uh, very vivid, the, the painting here. <laughs> Very modern in some ways. It is. It is. Yeah, I know. It's very modern. It's it's not typical. And then the uh, the Annunciation. You can see in the background that kind of muted landscaping that Leonardo does. Very typical in his paintings. You can see it in the back here. There's a lot of nice colors in this painting. Now, Karen, did you see one of these at all, these early ones? Which one did you see? Oh, you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Oh, you're still muted. Donna, <laughs> have you ever seen originals? Um, I don't think I have. I have not. Been, I would like to be the Louvre. I have not been there yet. But no, I haven't, unfortunately. And yes, I have seen both of them. Um, and it is quite amazing um, to see any artwork in person versus, uh, you know, online. But these are great, mm -hmm. great pictures. Yep. He was fantastic. Well, many of the museums have uh, digitized in very high resolution some of their collections where Definitely. you can see them closer online than you can get up to them in person. Right. Yeah. Definitely. In fact, there are some current exhibits going on. I just went to one in, in California uh, regarding the forensics of Leonardo. Which, which mm. I forget who was just speaking, but yes, the behind the scenes where they look with x-rays to see what's under his paintings. And it is pretty oh. interesting to see what he's redone, redone, redone. Uh, interesting. All that, all that new digital technology is pretty fantastic to, to look deeply into art like this. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Um, so let's um, actually I want to show you a video just to get for people who are not familiar, maybe with some of his biography. Let's take a look at this so we can get caught up here. Among most important painters of the Italian Renaissance and the father of the high Renaissance style. Leonardo da Vinci was born on April 15, 1452, in Vinci, Italy. By age 14, he was apprenticing under the famous artist Verrocchio. One of Leonardo's greatest contributions to painting was his introduction of the idea of sfumato, which essentially means smoky and is a way of producing atmospheric perspective in paintings. Da Vinci became a master artist in the Guild of St. Luke at age 20, and in 1482 moved to Milan and began taking commissions from wealthy patrons. 
One of the earliest complete works he did was the Annunciation, which has that spectacular background that he had perfected. The most famous work and the most important one that Leonardo produced while in Milan was his Last Supper for the refectory of the Church of Santa Maria della Grazia. He left Milan in 1499 and traveled throughout Italy, working for a number of different patrons. Leonardo's 1503 commission for the Battle of Anghiari represented a high point in his life. It was a vast project, a fresco painting that would have decorated one wall of the Grand Council Chamber in the Palazzo Vecchio in Florence. And Michelangelo was to paint the other wall facing. The project never came to be. During the early 1500s, da Vinci also began painting the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa is one of Leonardo's most important works. It's today one of the world's most famous paintings. I can't think of any other work that has so consistently fascinated people. Mm -hmm. Leonardo da Vinci was a true Renaissance man. He's well known as a great artist, but in fact, he also made great contributions to foundations of science. He engaged in projects like designs to reroute rivers, urban planning, the creation of pedestrian streets in the centers of cities, all designed to cut down on the chaos of life around him. Leonardo went to Rome to work for Pope Leo X in 1513, and he stayed about three years. While there, he practiced dissections and laid the foundations for the study of human anatomy. He spent his final years in the employ of the King of France, producing works for him as well as for other members of the French uh, nobility. Leonardo da Vinci died on May 2nd, 1519 in Ambrose, France. Such was his stature that it was said he died in the arms of the French king. Leonardo is deservedly one of history's most famous painters. As the founder of the High Renaissance style, as one of the greatest naturalists who ever lived, he is someone who we continue to admire today. That gives you a little fill in there about his life. So in 1472, he's about 20 years old, and his dad helped him set up his own studio. <laughs> he still had a connection with Braccio. He still, uh, for the next like four years, he still did some work with them, uh, even though he had his own studio. Uh, he had joined the Guild of St. Luke which was all these, uh, it was a group of these Florentine artists and medical doctors, and they just talked about what was going to happen, you know, what was going on in the day. It's really how, how art and music gets, you know, pushed forward is by these people, you know, sharing their ideas together. This is how, you know, this, these ideas come up and these new changes happen in, in, these, in the arts. So he, had, he was going to paint the altarpiece, in the Plaza Vecchio, which they did just mentioned, which never got completed, and the Adoration of Maggi, which was a uh, commission for the monks at San Don Donato, those also was never completed. He had a little issue in 1476. <laughs> uh, kind of, you know... <laughs> He, yeah, he and a, a couple of the guys were you know, accused of a sodomy, which was punishable by death at that point. Now, how they got acquitted, <laughs> they were very lucky that they got acquitted. But, you know, he was a um, he was a very private man. He was very uh, conscious of how people thought about him. Um, and it really damaged him for a little bit there because he didn't like being thought of that way. And it really, you know, he only stayed in Milan a few more years and they left. People say that that's one of the reasons he left was because of the accusation. Um, other people say that he was just going to go and, uh, you know, further his career by leaving Milan. But let's take a look at the um, now the adoration of Maggi. This, this is interesting. It was unfinished. This is what, you know, what they had here, what was uh, completed. 
out of the drawing. And of course, the uh, the the altar was never done. This is the, um, the only thing that's left from this period of time. So when he left for Milan, in Milan, he worked for the Duke of Milan. And he really hit the road running when he got there. He had a burst, <laughs> a burst of artistic energy. But the interesting thing about Leonardo is he was also an engineer and a very good engineer. And every place he lived, he did engineering jobs. He would do engineering gigs on the side. So was he really an engineer who dabbled in art or an artist who dabbled in engineering? It's really hard to tell. It's it kind of blurry. Um, but he had this real big spurt of uh, uh, creativity when he got to Milan. He did Virgin of the Rocks, The Last Supper, and the Salvatore Mundi um, painting, which is fantastic. And he was supposed to do this bronze horse. <laughs> This was going to be a big deal. This thing was five meters tall. I mean, this was supposed to, this was supposed to be like a real artistic achievement to do this bronze sculpture. And he did make a clay um, version of it. It was up and stand, you know, working. But then France invaded Italy <laughs> at the turn of the 15th century. And the bronze that was supposed to go to a statue went to military weapons. And the statue ended up uh, getting knocked down by the soldiers. The French soldiers used it for um, target practice. So that was the end of his bronze horse that he was supposed to do. Um, so <clears throat> let's take a look at some of these works right here. This is the Madonna and Child. Has anyone ever seen this one? Yeah, Karen, did you... How was it seeing it in person? Was there anything that you, like when you look at it here, something that stood out to you when you saw it? You can unmute yourself. <laughs> uh, actually, with all the digitizing nowadays, it sometimes makes it even brighter than it really is. And of course, over the years, the originals sometimes are a little duller mm -hmm. than, they, than they were when they were painted. But but in real life, they're just so much larger if you can get close enough and then really look at the 3D, the the the, the depth of the paint, which is the hard thing to see on a right. screen, the, the depth of the paint. And that that is always interesting to see. And even sometimes the pencil marks that they mm. have, that the, the docents will point out the pencil marks of his original versus what it is today. That's hard to see on a screen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You'd have to go right up to it to see it. Mm. Karen, where did you see uh, the Madonna and Child? Uh, I think this one was in Mil uh, Milan. I was going to look back through my notes, uh, blah, 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 and I'm not sure. I've been to, like I said, I've been to eight, um, six different countries and eight different museums in those countries. So wherever this was. Um, I, think it, I think it was in the Louvre. I think it was. I didn't see it in Milan. I didn't see it in Milan. Virgin of the Rocks was in the National Gallery of London. I, I'm sorry, I don't have all my notes with me. I was, I thought I would recall it, but uh, it, it doesn't have a lot of works. I'll say that uh, that are completed. That you know, there's really yeah. ten, ten major museums in the in the world that have his ten major works, and so yeah. they're, they're only in um, I think six seven countries, eight countries. And, and that's a good point to make. He, he didn't complete a lot of works. He left a lot uncompleted. But with Leonardo, one of the great things is there are so many exhibits of his drawings because he oh. loved drawing. And so you can go almost, except for lately it's unusual, but previously almost any city, major city in the world have, has an exhibit, but many times it will be his drawings, which are just as fascinating as all of his oil paintings. Right. I mentioned earlier, Windsor Castle has a huge collection. Mm. His drawings. Mm. And this is a study of the head of Christ. This is something that he was working on just to show you his when, you know, pieces that he was just like sketching, doodling. And then, of course, there's the Last Supper. Now, he, 
came, he developed a lot of different techniques for painting that were different at the time. Um, one of them was the fumato um, style, which is painting oil on wet plaster, which is what he did for the Last Supper. Unfortunately, after 20 years, it started peeling off the wall. So some frescoes that he did during this period of time um, aren't even really around anymore because of that technique he used. It just, it, it I can't, uh, yeah, I can comment on that because I'm a big uh, fan of fresco, true fresco, yeah. what they call blind fresco. Mm -hmm. And what happened here was uh, when you do real fresco, you have to paint, you have to create it in small portions. And he wanted to have the ability to kind of go back and forth and work on this. So he basically painted on a dry wall <clears throat> with a tempura. And of course, it was real moist. And I've been, I've seen this piece many years ago. And it was really moist, a lot of moisture. And like you say, just eventually the stuff started falling off the wall. With the true uh, buen fresco, the pigment is part of the plaster itself. And that's why we have you know, we've got frescoes from Pompeii, 79 AD, that are in better shape than this thing right. is. Yeah, and also he he was a perfectionist too. And that could be why his output was so low and so many unfinished pieces was because of his perfectionism. You know, that can freeze you in your tracks. Yep. And I know the uh, history of this painting, when he painted it, he would paint for 24 hours straight and then he would leave it alone for three days and then he'd go back to it. So he, you know, and he was always, um, he, he questioned whether or not he could draw the face of Christ, you know, accurately or, you know, depict it in the, in the proper way. So he was agonizing over <laughs> this painting when he was painting it, which that's a common thing that happens. Um, Michelangelo did the same thing too, when he does the Sistine Chapel it's, there's a lot of pressure when you're painting Jesus or God. <laughs> there's a lot of pr peer pressure. And uh, they it does affect their painting. You know, so this painting, he didn't do it all in one, you know, couple days. It went on. Um, yeah, and Michelangelo was actually using a really true fresco, like even mm -hmm. a, what they call mezzo fresco, where he was painting on wet plaster mm -hmm. most of the time. Yeah. I have a question on the drawings. Are they sketches of his pictures or just isolated drawings that he drew? Oh, they're a mixture of things. They're, um, yeah, there's some of them are sketches, just unfinished things, ideas that he had. And then there's all the engineering stuff that he did. He, you know, he had drawings of all these different, you know, war machines, tanks and everything. We're going to watch a little video about some of the stuff. He had quite a creative mind. He was an engineer. And he had all these ideas of, uh, you know, things that should be invented. Some things have been invented since then. Some things I think they've discovered would not be possible. <laughs> but yeah, for his time, he had some really far futuristic ideas. And that's what these drawings, there's lots of them. And uh, they're all over the place. I, I think who was the one that, is it Elon Musk or who, who owns the, one of the notebooks. Bill Bill Gates. Oh, Bill Gates. Bill Gates has one of the notebooks, which I think is going to be in the divorce <laughs> fight right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. On, on that subject, Donna, yes, he was he was um, passionate with his notebooks. So many, many of his exhibits are just notebook after notebook. But they're just filled with thousands of drawings, either of pictures he's going to make or never mm -hmm. made or never finished, and also all his inventions. Hey, yeah. I was going to mention one more thing while you have this up on the screen, mm -hmm. if, uh, which was pointed out to us in, in a, uh, a tour. Uh, oh, great. If, if you look at uh, where Jesus's feet would be, and there's mm -hmm. kind of a gray yes. Yeah. That, that had been completed. You could see his feet and just as you, but what happened is that's a, the room that it's in is, is actually a refectory and where they eat. And they needed some space. They they actually cut that out and made a door out of it to get to the back <laughs> of this room. I mean, you know, I just can't believe. I mean, things do happen to to original works that you just can't believe. So that that is is a well that well and that then they did that way back, right? That was way back, yeah. Well, hmm. you know, these guys were contractors when you think about it, right? Yep. They didn't yep. just paint a beige wall. Everything had to be fresco. 
So you called the whoever was available. If it's Leonardo, Michelangelo, whoever, come come do this wall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and well, one comment about the museum, if anyone's planning on going, you know, post COVID, uh, you do have to make reservations. Uh, mm -hmm reservations in advance before you get to your preferably it's a small place so. yeah. it's very small and they only allow so many people in at a yeah time. yeah if anyone has the names of the museum go ahead and put it in chat so other people in the class can um it's can in a church them. yeah it's in a church well this one's in a church <coughs> yes <coughs> this one's in a church yeah but th but things like there's the leonardo museum and those type of museums if you want to go check out those all right, and then the Salvador Mundi. I'm going to show you some other pic, um, Salvador Mundi lookalikes that they have in this. Um, this Wikipedia is kind of funny. But the great thing about this, look at that globe, the orb. Yeah. That's just see-through like that. Um, and that, again, that's his technique um, showing through here. Um, I'm going to go forward here. Here's a like a preliminary showing the overpainting, they said. This is a photograph. <clears throat> this is an engraving. Mm. Mm. Now, this was in... The painting as it appeared in a 2005 auction house catalog. Now, the thing with this painting, it was just sold in 2017 for $450.3 million. It's the most expensive painting ever sold in a public auction. Here's a photograph after the cleaning because they, they did a restoration on it. Now, this is after the modern rest restoration and they reframed it. That's a great frame for that. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's a nice up close picture. Mm. The curls of the hair. He did, he did hair really well. That very light. Yeah. The wispiness of it. And there's a nice close up of the globe. And then here's uh, his one of his manuscripts, what they would look like. He would have writing, describing things and drawings. And he had a lot of these notebooks. This is the drapery in that in the Monday uh, picture. You can see some of the drapery studies that he did when he was practicing it. It's amazing. Now he looks almost real. Now this one is from the school because he, he had a school, an artist school, and I think these are his students trying to recreate the the Mundy painting. So this is pretty good. Again, it's a follower. Their interpretation, but they did pretty good on the translucent. Here's another one of a follower. Now this one, eh, they didn't get the see-through part on the on the globe. And here's another one. This is a Morsaw. It's just interesting how many uh, versions of this people have done. This is my favorite. It looks like I did this one. <laughs> Notice the globe. It's just like a, a white ball. I guess they they did they couldn't do that. <laughs> the look. But this is another student. And here's one, no globe. It's just that this is the head of the Christ Redeemer. This is a different painting. 
So it's kind of interesting to see that. So it's, it was studied by a lot of students trying to do that effect with the globe that he did. All right, so he went to um, Venice a little bit after the, uh, there was that in the invasion of the French. So he did go to Venice. And in Venice, he was employed as a military engineer. He didn't waste his time. He was there for just a short period of time. Uh, he was commissioned to, to design a naval defense system for the system, for the, for the city. And then when he finished, he went back to Florence. And in Florence, he had another burst of energy. <laughs> he painted some more paintings. Um, let's take a look at the Madonna and St. Anne up close. Very typical that the muted back, you know, landscape in the back. And this one here is a retouched picture. That means it has been digitally altered from its original version. So it increases the brightness. So this painting might be in really bad shape. And the Mona Lisa. Of course, one of his fam most famous paintings in the Louvre. I've seen that. It was surprising how small it was. Yeah, it, it is surprising, isn't it? Yeah. Um, especially with the other paintings in the room. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're massive paintings. <laughs> you look and it's just one straight in front of you and everybody was just standing there. It was, yep. Yes, yeah, very <laughs> interesting. Yeah, you can hardly get close to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because everyone that's the you know, that's the painting they're all going for. Especially if you're only going to be in the loop for the afternoon. Mm -hmm. You're gonna head right there. Highlights. <laughs> yeah. But this and, was painted yeah. in Florence, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Originally? Yep. Yeah, this was in Florence. When he returned, he did these three paintings. The Battle of Angari was also done, which was unfinished. We like take a look at this. He didn't finish, but Peter Rubens did his rendition of it. Uh, working off of, I guess, the sketches that uh, Da Vinci did. He was able to put that together. All right, so once he, um, when he left Florence, he worked for uh, King Louis the um, the seventh. I'm I'm sorry, the twelfth. <laughs> I'm looking at this, and the French governor of Milan. He did mainly engineering here, though, when he was in Milan during this period of time. Um, they were kicking um, during the. Oh, sorry, during this time, he did things like I'll give I'll give you a list of things that he was working on here. He was he was definitely an engineer during this period, not necessarily an artist. He was making maps for the military defense. He constructed a dam to supply water to the canals of the, of the city. He did a, a diversion of a river project. Um, so he did a bunch of things here uh, for the military. This was very common for, for Leonardo to do this. He was really a very smart guy. So then they started pushing the... Um, the, the French were, you know, still involved and they were uh, getting rid of anyone that was French from Milan. And at that point, he went to Rome for a few years to get out of there. And during this time, they also say that um, <clears throat> during this time, he worked for the King Francois, the first in France. This was his later period of painting. Um, he was considered the first painter and engineer of the French royal court. And during this time, he did the St. John the Baptist. And he lived here until he, had, he died in 1519. Let's take a look at the St. John Baptist here. Has anyone ever seen this one? All right. 
I'm muted again. Oh, brother. Oh. Uh, my husband only wishes he could mute me at home. But um, <laughs> that is, uh, it's just being up close and personal. If you can get close enough, that makes all the difference. If you can't get close enough, it doesn't help. And if there's glass over it, that doesn't help. But if you can get up close and personal, it, it becomes 3D. Yeah. Oh, really? Most That's of interesting. Do they just yeah. they they jump out as if it's three you know different layers? Right. Yeah. Mm. That's great. I don't know where. Do you know where this one is? I've seen it, but I don't know where. I might have been at the Vatican. I'm not sure where it is now. They uh, they rarely go on tour. These that we're looking oh, at. Yeah. Yeah. That would be that would be too dangerous. Right. Couldn't. So during this period of time when um, Leonardo was working for the court, you know, he he spent this time putting getting his, uh, I guess, his affairs in order. He started collecting his notebooks together and organizing things. He didn't really have any real job there because um, he was old at this point. And um so he put together his papers. He wrote opinions on architecture, mathematics, engineering, science, you name it, human anatomy. He had, you know, information and interest in all of that, as well as art and painting and drawing. So he had a lot, like there were thousands and thousands of drawings that he left behind. And when he died, you know, he died in 1519. He had a very close relationship to the king. You know, there's the famous picture of the king being on his bedside. Let's see if I can find that one. This is supposed to be his childhood birthplace. Is this the place you're talking about, um, Karen? Mm. Oh, I'm muted. Uh, I, actually, where I was <laughs> was Am Amboise, France, oh. is where he did live the last years of his life with King Francois. The oh, okay, yeah. And, he, and uh, I'd always heard that he lived his last two years there and the king furnished him a home. And I envisioned a small little home, but it was this huge chateau with acres and acres of gardens. And and uh, and the main thing, like you were saying, he did die there, apparently, in King Francois the first arms. Mm -hmm. But one thing that they added um, when we were there, well, his last two years, the reason they say in Amboise, the reason um, Leonardo was enticed to move there his last two years, because he was Italian, he wasn't French. Um, the only thing he had to do the last two years for the king of France was to have dinner with him every night in the king's castle, Chateau, and mm. discuss scientific, military, very high elevated um, <laughs> conversations. And that's what he did. He had dinner, they say, with him every night until he died. And I could, yeah, that's a good gig. Mm. <laughs> At his age, I mean, you know, he's not going to, he doesn't want to be. Yeah, he liked talking about all this stuff for sure. It's, it's all the stuff he loved. So you could see why he took it because it really was a do nothing job. <laughs> it really, you know, he didn't have commissions to do and. And he was at, you know, the end of his life and he was not feeling well. And it was a perfect time for him to, you know, slow down. Uh, now, he is buried there also, which a lot of the Italians are not too happy about because he has a fabulous burial ground on the Chateau uh, Amboise in, in France, in mm -hmm. Amboise, the town. And that is where he's buried. And I know a lot of you hear every once in a while that the Italian uh, Art Cultural League or whatever wants to get him back into uh, Italy, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> well, he the the Chateau d'Ambrage that was um, where he I think where he was wasn't it bombed in the war? Oh, um, it was destroyed. Oh, French Re French Revolution. I think it got destroyed, and I thought he got reburied, but he's still in Ambrage. Yes. But they don't know what exactly where, ah. possibly. So here's some other. Uh, this is a landscape of Arno Valley. This they think this is his first true landscape. It's not finished, but this was 1473. This looked like this looked like a castle over here. This would have been gorgeous. <laughs> it finished. Yeah, can you can you just imagine with the colors? 
Now, this is an interesting uh, painting here. This is in Washington, D.C. It's our only Leonardo da Vinci in the Western Hemisphere, I believe. Really? I Look at the see. curls. The curls are really nice. I like this better than the Mona Lisa, but. This has more color. It really pops out at you. In the background, the landscaping in the background. Now, this is in the Hermitage. The sketch of the hanging of. <laughs> and that's the Virgin of the Rocks. This Oh, this is the Louvre version. Mm. That's interesting. So there's another one. Head of a woman. So when he died, did all of his uh, all of his drawings and uh, paintings become property of the French government? They went to his he had a lifetime friend and they went to him. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, um, I'm trying to think of the, the name. It was someone from childhood. Oh, God, I'm, I'm, his name is escaping me right now. Um, I'll put it in the notes. <clears throat> But he had a lifetime friend, a guy, and they, you know, they, you know, they suspect that he was gay, that he probably was gay. And um, considering everything that was happening to him, but he did have a childhood friend and he had a student later on in life that they believe he had an affair with there too. So here's a portrait of a musician. This is in Milan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One of his definitely famous uh, sketches. This is in Venice. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is his horse, the horse that never was to be. <laughs> so then believe, over a period of time, the, this friend's families kind of doled out some of this, um, his work? Yeah, I that mu I I don't know the exact you know details of it, but I would think probably something like that. Uh, you know, it's hard to say because you know at the time, who knows? I mean, you wonder how much of it actually got lost too. Because mm -hmm. just think when you get your relative stuff, you're like, ah, that's Leo's crap over there in the corner. You know, <laughs> good thing they didn't have one eight hundred U haul. Was it haul away? Well, I'm guessing that the, the French probably took their fair share before they gave it oh, to yeah. this guy was. Yeah, you wonder how much of it just got, just disappeared in that case. Here's some more. Here's his map of Imola. Remember, he did maps. He was a cartographer. Now, this is part of the Battle of Agari, which he didn't complete. I mean, he had sketches of it. Now, this one's lost. Oh. Another drawing. There's, there's Chateau d'Amboise. There's the Chateau, yeah. D'Amboise. Now, this is, this is in the Louvre. Did someone ask where it was? This is in the Louvre, it looks like. Mm. Oh, this is the guy, Sally. Yeah. That's, a, that's the one. That he grew up with They're together all their lives. Mm -hmm. And this is in the Fusi Annunciation. And not the Annunciation. Oh, this is the one that's the only one in the Vatican. This is the unfinished painting of St. Jerome. He's got a stone in his hand and he's pounding his chest with it in penance. Mm -hmm. And the tiger at the bottom here, the story goes that he pulled a thorn out of the tiger's paw. And the tiger was, you know, he and the tiger were friends after that. I'm not the tiger, the lion. <laughs> but this is the only one that's in the Vatican of uh, Da Vinci's. Lady in the room. And, mm. I love this one. <laughs> Gorgeous. <It's, laughs> mm. That one's in Poland. Mm. And there's the Last Supper. And then 
the Mona Lisa's in the Louvre. <clears throat> this is in the Royal Library of Turin in Italy. His self-portrait. Mm. A warrior picture. And then this is an example of some of his uh, his medical or anatomy drawings. Look at this, wow. the skeleton. Wow. Yeah, he was doing those dissections. <laughs> when it was like yeah. illegal, I think. Oh right? my God, it was totally illegal. They did not like that he was doing them. Here's the human brain and skull. <laughs> you mean after the people died, I hope. <laughs> well, yeah, hopefully. I know. Then that's a whole other story. <laughs> He's going to be on the ID channel. You, uh, you haven't mentioned his uh, mirror writing also, which is kind of strange. The mirror he, writing? Yeah, he wrote backwards. He could write oh. from right to left. And it, you would have to hold it up to a mirror to actually see it. <laughs> this is a statue of him. And here's the, the famous death of Leonardo da Vinci that was painted with him and the king. And then there's the, the museum for da Vinci. Let me play you a video that talks about... Um, some of his uh, his inventions, which were quite clever. Hello and welcome to Now You Know. These are my top seven picks from Leonardo da Vinci's inventions. Number seven, the self-propelled cart. The self-propelled cart was one of the many inventions that Leonardo created dealing with locomotion and transportation. Leonardo's cart was powered by coiled springs and it also featured steering and brake capabilities. When the brake was released, the car would propel forward. Da Vinci's cart design was so ahead of its time that its exact workings baffled scholars until late in the 20th century. But in 2006, Italy's Institute and Museum of the History of Science in Florence built a working model based on Da Vinci's design and, to the surprise of many, the cart actually worked. Number six, the machine gun. The way Leonardo da Vinci saw it, the problem with the cannons of the time was that they took far too long to load. His solution to that problem was to build multi-barreled <laughs> guns that could be loaded and fired simultaneously. While one set of cannons was being fired, another set would be cooling and the third set could be loaded. This system allowed soldiers to repeatedly fire without interruption. Leonardo da Vinci's design for the 33-barreled organ is generally regarded as the basis for the modern day machine gun, a weapon that didn't really develop for commercial use until the 19th century. Number five, the parachute. Da Vinci made a sketch of the invention with this accompanying description. If a man had a tent made of linen of which the apertures or openings have all been stopped up and it be 12 braccia, which is about 23 feet across and 12 in depth, he will be able to throw himself down from any great height without suffering any injury. Daredevil Adrian Nichols <laughs> constructed a prototype based on da Vinci's design and tested it. Despite skepticism from experts, da Vinci's design worked as intended huh. and Nichols even noted that it had a smoother ride than the modern parachute. <laughs> Number four, the robot knight. Designed for a pageant in Milan, which the Duke had put Leonardo in charge of overseeing, the robot knight consisted of a knight suit filled with gears and wheels that were connected to an elaborate pulley and cable system. Through these mechanisms, Da Vinci's robot knight was capable of independent motion, sitting down, standing up, moving its head, and lifting its visor. Using several different Da Vinci drawings as blueprints, roboticist Mark Rochim built a prototype of the robotic knight in 2002, which was able to walk and wave. Number three, the diving suit. Originally designed as a way of warding off invading ships, Da Vinci's diving suit would allow men to engage in a little underwater sabotage by cutting holes in the bottom of the enemy's hull. The leather diving suit was equipped with a bag-like mask that went over the diver's head. Attached to the mask around the nose area were two cane tubes 
that led up to a cork diving bell floating on the surface. Unfortunately, the design, complete with breathing hose and glass goggles, wasn't needed at the time and would only find itself submerged in planning stages. Number two, the armored tank. The precursor to the modern tank, Leonardo da Vinci's armored car invention was capable of moving in any direction and was equipped with a large number of weapons. The platform was covered by a large protective cover reinforced with metal plates, which was to be slanted to better deflect enemy fire. The motion of the machine was to be powered by eight men inside of the tank who would constantly turn cranks to spin the wheels. <laughs> Despite its elaborate design, da Vinci's tank has a major flaw. The powering cranks went in opposite directions. This made forward motion impossible. Scholars suggest that da Vinci, a pacifist at heart, may have inserted the flaw intentionally to discourage the war machine from ever being built. And number one, the flying machine. One of da Vinci's most famous inventions, the flying machine, also known as the ornithopter, ideally displays his powers of observation and imagination. It had a wingspan that exceeded 33 feet, and the frame was to be made of pine covered in raw silk to create a light but sturdy membrane. To power the wings, the pilot would pedal a crank connected to a rod and pulley system. The machine also had a hand crank for increased energy output and a headpiece for steering. Unfortunately, while the flying machine may have flown once it was in the air, a person could never have created enough power to get the device off the ground. You are no longer ignorant concerning these... That's just to show you some of his, uh, and I'm going to give you, you'll get some links in the email. This is one of them. You can take a look. This is an article that shows some of his um, anatomy drawings that he did. Um, just to show you real quick, uh, you know, from all the dissections he did. It's amazing the detail that he had in his knowledge. I know. Look at this. Oh, there's one here. Look at this. All the tendons and the muscles. Yeah, and the shoulder is really complicated. Anyway. It's not like he had a, you know, a CT scan machine or something like this to be exactly. <laughs> MRI. Um, and the intestines, skulls. Wow. So you'll you'll get this. So you can take a look at these closer. Um, you know, just to look at the. Uh, it's amazing, um, the things this guy. You know, he was so far ahead of his day. I mean, if could you imagine if he was alive today? Uh, yeah. Boy, he'd have a field day with the technology that he could come up with. So pretty interesting guy. Um, thank you, everyone, for your partic participation today and uh, hearing all the stories. It's always great to hear about people when they're actually seeing the art up close to know what it's like. Um, other classes we have, Famous Art of the Vatican, if you're interested in uh, learning about the art that's in the Vatican. We have The Colorful World of Chihuly. That's another class if you like uh, Chihuly. Uh, famous um, Women in Art History, we did the first part. We have the second part coming, I believe it's next week. Uh, so look for it on, a, uh, on the calendar. And we have The Life and Music of Beethoven. We did Bach last night, so you should see that coming around on the calendar also. Uh, Question? Uh, question, yes. Yes. Uh, most of the, these seem to be at night. Is there any reason why they're not in the daytime? And what do you put in to find it? I put art history in. Is that, is that the best to put in to find them? Um, let me go to the site here. Let me go real quick. You want to get set up? Get set up that IO. Yeah, you could put in art. You could also just put my name in. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm doing a lot of these right now. Um, so if you put in Donna. Um, oh, okay. Because I and, uh, look up art. Yeah, I would say search by art or history. Okay. Probably art. Probably art would be the best. Like if I do art, let me see what shows up. Um. Let's see what we have here. Okay, so they, they'll show the art classes too, but you should see like Famous Art of the Vatican, Art History 101, I'm doing that tomorrow. Celebration, you know, so you can see some. When's that one? Art on discussion. 
Oh, the art history one? Is that the night one again? Uh, yeah, well, they start them out at night, but then when they replay, they'll do them during the day. They move them around. Okay. So, yeah, that's tomorrow. We're going to talk about, you know, our history has a lot of periods and movements and some people it's a little confusing. So we're going to kind of sort through and just give you an idea so that when you're looking at art and someone says, oh, he's an impressionist, you know what that means or, you know, or who it is, who, who's, you yeah, know, well, I'll give you at least one artist in each period so you know. Hmm. You have an idea so you can identify art. And that's five o'clock tomorrow night. Yes. yes. Okay. So but then when it, when it replays, it probably will be during the day because they kind of move them around. I've noticed they've been starting them at night and then shifting them later. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I looked yeah. and I couldn't find anything in the day. Right. I yeah. Excited when I found this in the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It should repeat more in the day after that. Okay. No. All right. Um, so you'll get your uh, you'll get uh, email with links. I'll give you links to the websites that I was showing you and more. Info uh, there, I think I included a few more um, videos, some longer ones about Da Vinci's life that you can enjoy. Uh, and you'll get a feedback form. Go ahead and fill out feedback, put in any class ideas or something that you would be interested in seeing. You can invite a friend now on our website and on the mobile device. You can click on the invite a friend, invite them through social media like Facebook or through email. And we have our help at getsetup.io email, which is good for everything. Support. You, if you're interested in hosting a group, if you're interested in music and art, gardening, whatever, go ahead and let us know. We'll, we'll get you started on a group. It's a nice way to meet people and engage with the community here. You can suggest new classes through here. If you have an organization that might be interested in our services, let us know the name of the organization and a contact name if you have one and they will contact the organization. And you can always request the session recordings through help at getsetup.io. So everyone, thank you for coming tonight. And I enjoyed all the, the, the lively discussion about the art, which is always the fun part of art. Uh, so everyone enjoy your evening and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.